Welcome to Racketology! Alright ladies and gentlemen, I have a huge surprise because I am here with Kurt, who has a very unique business. Kurt, tell us all about it. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Racketology, we are glad to have you guys here at Fort Knox. We have been running this business now for almost 40 years. We're the largest company in the world that deals in vintage sound recordings. And by vintage, I mean those records that were made basically from the dawn of recorded sound in terms of things that were actually uh, produced in a post-experimental way. That would be the early 1890s all the way up through the end of the 78 RPM era. So we deal in 78s, uh, cylinder records, radio transcriptions, soundtracks. When I say soundtrack, I don't mean like Oklahoma soundtrack. I mean actual discs that were played along with a film. Wow. You know, like Vitaphone did in the late 1920s. Right. So it's actually the soundtrack that the wow. audience would listen to when they were watching the movie. So all that kind of stuff. Basically anything recorded during that time period. And, and all your business is done mail order, right? For the most part. Occasionally we'll have people come by here like you notice when you pulled up, there are no signs outside, mm -hmm. no indication of what's going on in this building, mm -hmm. which is the way we like right, it. Right, right. Uh, but those people who are in the know can call us, come in, go through the our rejects out in the garage, which oftentimes has great stuff out there. Right. If somebody hadn't cleaned us out, which happened recently. Uh, and then we also have a few things here in the shop that they can look at. Uh, for the most part, we, uh, we sell stuff through our auction catalog. Sounds good. Let's check it out. Okay. So let me show you an auction catalog, just uh, so you know what that's all about. So this is our spring or our fall catalog. Just came out uh, a couple of weeks ago. This is an auction which closes on October 29th, Saturday, okay. October 29th. So if anybody's watching this video, they can go to 78rpm.com and they can download a copy of this PDF file. And there's seven or 8,000 different records in here, cylinders, Edison Diamond Disc, 78s, you name it. And uh, and they are welcome to bid on anything of interest to them. And they will be uh, uh, very pleasantly surprised if they are collecting this kind of stuff because okay. we have all genres, all types of records, all formats, you name it. Excellent, sounds good. So you are here at Fort Knox and uh, Right now we're in the packing room, so when, when this auction closes, you won't even be able to walk around here. This will be wow. piled with boxes and a lot of activity for about four weeks. Wow. Till we get everything boxed up and start shipping. Okay. Out. Right now it's kind of quiet. You guys are here after hours, so uh, we shouldn't be interrupted. So let's, uh, let's kind of... All right. Up. Sounds good. Lead the way. I'm very excited. So uh, this big place, we'll just uh, kind of poke in a couple of rooms and then we'll spend some time looking at some specific things. Okay. Uh, so this is, uh, you came through the loading dock door earlier. This is actually our front door here. Wow. And this is just a room that we have set up right now. We're uh, cleaning blue amberol cylinders on this table. Wow. Uh, this is where we keep the majority of our album sets, and usually that's going to be classical and operatic in nature, mm -hmm. some 10 inch pop stuff. Uh, this machine right here is our record flattener. This is actually a t shirt dryer, but we use it to flatten 78s. Now, you can't flatten a, a vinyl record through here, it just mm -hmm. you know, makes it all it, it makes it worse. But a shellac record of most types can be flattened, okay? There. You just got to be very careful about it. Uh, we have a second business here. You don't need to get into that, but uh, we sell seeds to people who want to grow their own food. Oh, nice. And those are called seed banks. So these are seed banks ready to ship out. Really cool. Five different sizes. So if you guys ever get into uh, seedology, you can come yeah, back. Yeah, come back and do that too. You never know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. And this is, this is a work environment right now. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know until this morning you guys were coming by, so we didn't do anything. We are just in the process of trying to get our auction done and make things happen. Yeah, no, this is great. Uh, there have been times where we have really made this place, uh, you know, a showcase. But, right. But it's not like that right now. we got crackling all over the place. This is great. This is, I love it. And it's natural habitat. Natural, exactly. Natural <laughs> habitat. You guys, uh, I know that you do a lot with audio equipment. 
And we uh, we do some audio equipment stuff. So you got some Macintosh wow. amps there. You've got uh, very nice Thorns here with uh, SME tone arm and length and so forth. Mm. So we got you know things laying around like that. Awesome. Most of the old stuff we deal in, however, is the real early stuff. Right. Wind up things and so forth. Really cool. We sell a lot of books. Well, not a whole lot of books. We sell some books. We people don't make books anymore. So I used to be I I had a lot of books for sale, but these days. Uh, most of that stuff is digital. We do have books over here, uh, various discographies and so forth. This stuff all has to do with the seed business, so it's different stuff. That's a that's a interesting sideline business to have. I like I like it. It is. It is, and it uh, it's growing like weeds or seeds or seeds. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, anything, uh, we like mechanical and musical antiques, mm -hmm. so uh, you're going to see a lot of that kind of stuff around here, and vintage advertising, and that sort of thing. Oh, these are great, too. This is all sheet music. I, uh, you know, I don't do a whole lot of this kind of stuff. I just buy it out of somebody's house and hang it on my wall. Yeah, it makes great art, you know, right? So. When I built this building uh, over 20 years ago, I had all these white walls, and I didn't have anything to put on it. But, uh, Couldn't ask for better, you know, set decoration, as it were. <laughs> exactly. O over the years, we found some stuff. Wow. Uh, this is our studio. So we don't, oh, wow. We don't record live music, but we do record live shows. Uh, twice a year, when we put together our auctions, we do what's called the bidder request show. That's bidder as in one who would bid on mm -hmm. the record. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so those individuals will let us know things in the current catalog that they want to hear, uh, or we pick out things that we want to hear because they're interesting or rare or mm -hmm. whatever. And we uh, uh, we produce a 15-hour show, which broadcasts over the internet two weekends wow. before the auction closes of things that are in the auction, so people can listen to that and say, "Oh, wow, that's great! I like to bid on it." Right, right. Love to add that to my collection. And we have a great time doing it. People, we've been doing it now for. Well, since auction 39, and we're now in auction 72. Amazing. This is a poster we put together of uh, some of the real cool highlights in auction 57. Really cool. And the, the labels themselves are such artwork, you know. Yeah. We're, we're, just neat. We're big about labels in here. Uh, this is uh, our uh, auction room. So this room is holding most of the records that are in that catalog I showed you Okay. Earlier. Wow. Uh, we're still allotting, so there's still stuff being added here. Uh, these shelves on your left would be holding the cylinders, but we haven't gotten to that yet, mm -hmm. so they're empty. Um, and we're set, set up here. Jack is going to film me tomorrow uh, as I go through the auction highlights. Hmm. So each time we do a catalog, we do auction highlight videos that we post on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And we go through the really expensive stuff or the really obscure or the very interesting things. And uh, and we throw that stuff up on YouTube because okay. uh, there's just so much of it. Yeah, like yeah. Scan records and post that. That's that's a lot of work. Absolutely. I mean, we do that, but we have much more stuff than we have time to scan. Yeah, this is amazing. This and is so like this is Jack. Hey, Jack. <laughs> uh, my lovely assistant. All right. Um, he's been here for uh, five years. Over five years. Yeah. Right. Uh, he was a graduate from Indiana University in uh, folklore. folklore. Cool. And so uh, he knows that kind of stuff. Yeah, when people that's, ask, what do you do with that major? Go to work in the auction There it is. What else that's awesome. Do? Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. I love it. Excellent. Yeah. So uh, if you see anything, uh, Mr. Recordology, mm -hmm. if you have a question about as we're walking around, yeah. point something out, ask me a question. Yeah, the, the, maybe I'll have an answer. Yeah, the, the antique systems we've seen kind of in the hallways and coming through like that radiola and stuff, very cool. Yeah. So any anything we can learn about those two would be great. So. Okay. Well, we'll continue on, and on any of that stuff we've already seen, if you want to uh, ask further questions, mm -hmm. uh, we can come back and look at it. Okay. You got that radiola there? Yeah, yeah. And an ice RCA. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, I didn't even notice that up there. Uh, what do they call those things that you put on, across the table? Like a runner? A runner. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Radiola runner. What uh, year would this be from, this radiola? This is uh, an early battery uh, set. You see your oh, WD wow. tubes there. That's where your battery would go. So this would, I don't know exactly, but I would say probably around 1926, wow. 27. Amazing. Somewhere around there. The biggest thing in radio since Marconi invented static. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I love it. Yep, yep. That's neato. 
So in here we have our our library, which again, this is a working environment. Right. Okay. So I've got stuff piled all over the place, but this is uh, probably one of the best uh, recorded sound libraries anywhere. Wow. We've got uh, books having to do with uh, record labels, phonograph companies, uh, genre discographies, label discographies, artist discographies. Uh, these. Uh, canvas over here filled with uh, periodicals and journals from all over the world. Wow. Like what we have here. This is the City of London Phonograph and Gramophone Society. Started in 1919. They still exist. Uh, we've got just all kinds of stuff. This is full of the Record Collector, which is a magazine devoted to opera uh, 78s. And lots Amazing. and lots of stuff. Uh, more audio equipment of different types. Nice Revox. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, we've got some really nice high-end audio stuff. Wow. Um, you know, we could spend an afternoon in here just talking yeah. about various things, which you guys don't have that time, but maybe uh, on a future trip. Yeah. This is a Mitchell Orb turntable wow. from England. Uh, I have uh, the motor here sent off to uh, England to have uh, some work uh, some servicing done on it, but that's a really cool turn. -turn. Yeah. Have you ever seen one of those? No. <laughs> those, those are just amazing. Unfortunately, so cool. it really doesn't belong here because it doesn't play 78. Uh oh. Well, we so as, I, as soon as I get that thing working, uh, it will be sold. Wow. And you know, and you know, I'll tell you because I'm telling your viewers, right? Yeah. Guys, this is not a museum. Right. Okay. We sell this stuff. So if you see anything on here that you're interested in, go to 78rpm.com. Uh, drop me an email and ask about it. Where do you obtain the bulk of your merchandise? I travel all over the United States buying collections. Okay. And sometimes outside the United States as well. Okay. So uh, so it comes in from all over. I, I get people every day trying to sell me records. And so over time, I build up a pile of promising leads in a particular area, and mm -hmm. then I head off in that direction. So I'll do an East Coast trip, a West Coast trip, a Midwest trip, a Florida trip, okay. whatever it might be. And generally two weeks at a time, four or 5,000 miles. So these are like estates and, and things of that nature? Yeah, yeah, estates. I don't go to estate sales and auctions and that kind of stuff generally, but I do estates in the mm -hmm. in the sense that if a collector passes away and, mm -hmm. and they contact me. But, you know, we have, a, we have plenty of stuff coming our direction, so that's fine. So you probably have noticed the uh, cardboard figures around the room. Yes. These are all uh, Victor recording artists from the late 1920s. And these were done by the Victor Talking Machine Company for their dealers for use in window displays. Oh, wow. Of their stores. So uh, I I've ne I don't even know what a complete set of these would represent. But this is by far the largest number I've ever found yeah. in one place. I bought them all from one guy. And uh, they're, they're just fabulous. Very cool. Uh, I'll point this out right quick. Since we're standing here, I don't know how many of your uh, viewers will know anything about uh, this situation. But this is a terrible ugly typewriter and i would not normally want it in my shop except for the fact that this was a typewriter used by brian rust brian rust was the father or even the grandfather if you will of discography he started writing discographies back in the 1930s wow and i got to meet him a couple of times on trips to england where i was purchasing things uh this is brian rust's guide to discography oh wow and uh here's a a letter that he wrote to me in 2003 on this machine uh as we know typewriters have a fingerprint right so uh the pages that he used when he uh that he created when he was using this right are the same pages that are reproduced in the discographies that oh he, wow well he's most famous for uh his jazz record discography okay this is a two volume set it went through many different editions but you can see that that's typewritten that's not typeset right Absolutely. came off of that machine oh my goodness that is amazing and uh so we have that. We have this one right here. This is Brian Rust's uh, historical uh, discography of cylinders and 78s. He did many, many books, and uh, several of them are, are on this shelf and elsewhere. So uh, when I was there the second time, I just said, Brian, when the day comes that you don't want that typewriter anymore, I would love to buy it from you. Wow. And everybody else is saying, oh, Brian, when are you going to sell those records? You know? Right. I didn't care about the records, but that typewriter meant something to me. Absolutely. He said, yeah. what do you want with my typewriter? Sir, are you kidding me? 
you were Brian Rust. This is your typewriter. Right. You know, it would be like having a, you know, Buffalo Bill's pistol. Right. right? Yeah. 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 That's Absolutely. Tool. That's that is what that's his you his thing. So anyway, so that's that is a very cool. Uh, there are so many things there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's incredible. And there's so many titles here just on the shelf that catch my eye. Like I see the V Discs book. That's mm -hmm. stuff I could just pour over for hours and hours. <laughs> just fantastic. Most of this stuff, of course, has been out of print for for years, and a lot of it's very difficult to find. Now, is this is this little record over here? Is this like a dealer record? It looks like a little paper. Okay, so that is a uh, a Durium recording. Okay. All right. They made the hit of the week. Hit of the week. And we reviewed some of those. Okay. okay. Yeah. But they also did an awful lot of uh, non-commercial pressings like this. Okay. Uh, advertising discs, right. um, uh, just special things, uh, language uh, sats, that sort of stuff. This one, uh, A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, this is uh, by Compton McKenzie and Christopher Stone. They were involved, originated the Gramophone magazine, mm. which began, I think, in 1922 and continues to this day. Wow. This is a complete set of gramophone magazines bound uh, up through the end of the 78 RPM era. Okay. A really n nice uh, thing to have. Yeah. And uh, uh, he sent this out. I'm not exactly sure how these were distributed. I don't know if they went to subscribers of the magazine or, or how that worked out. But uh, anyway, I we have a, a large number of these in our current catalog, mm. the Durium Special Press. Yeah, yeah. And this was in my collection. I pulled this aside to keep with my uh, set of uh, wow. gramophones. Up. Yeah, those are really cool. I have one or two of the advertising ones. So I think it's a gas station one or whatnot. But well, there was a, the big one was a Great American Value of 1932. Mm. Maybe that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. That's if okay. I had yeah, a yeah. Picture of the car on the back. Yes, yeah. that's the one we so, got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we those got uh, those are pretty common. They they made a bunch of those things, but but it's a very cool record. You know. You can have cool without having rare, right? Right, right, absolutely. This is Thomas Edison. Is this a real signature? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. Sure is. That's amazing. He and his wife. Wow. Uh, this is an Edison Beethoven uh, diamond disc machine, wow. which is the last diamond disc uh, uh, machine that they made. Uh, just before they went out of business. Wow. I guess I guess the uh, the electric machines uh, came after this, but right. this was wind up. And uh, these are very rare. In fact, this I've I've had a lot of photographs. This is the first uh, Edison Beethoven I've ever had. Amazing. That is a, that's a very very scarce photograph. And how about the disc on the wall with the signatures? Uh, okay. So I got another thing. Okay, all of you recordology viewers out there. I would like one of you guys to tell me what this disc is, because I don't know. Uh, this is a disc, which I, I don't even remember where I picked it up. But if you look at these autographs, are you seeing anything? Can you see them? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to pick out. So here we have Andrews sisters. Oh. All, all the Andrews sisters. This is Marlena Dietrich. It's kind wow. Of right here. I don't have my glasses on. Uh, here we have the four ink spots. Here we have Jimmy Dorsey and Bob Crosby, Connie Boswell. Uh, who else am I seeing? Here are the Mills good. brothers. There's Bing Crosby. Oh my goodness, wow. Uh, I mean, these are people, right? These wow. are interesting. Here's Judy Garland. Wow. So Isn't all of these were signed by these individuals. Now, how did that, how, how did that happen? Well, if you look at this, you can see for instance, that uh, Marlena Dietrich, she really bore down on the uh, engraving tool right. right here. I mean, it kind of dented the record. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm looking at this, I'm thinking that this is one of a kind, but I actually picked up a second copy that is identical, identical to this, which I gave to uh, my uh, the guy who was working for me for so many years at the time. Um, I, I I just figured that at some big get together they probably had this on the table. Be sure you sign the record before you leave, kind of a thing. And is it? It looks because like a this, six, is, this would be like a sixteen inch stamper, right, or stamper something for yeah. a uh, for a radio transcription. Wow. Um, but instead, it's got all these autographs on there. So I don't know when this was made. I don't know the circumstances behind it. I thought it was unique until I found that second one. The second one. And so I I, I don't have any idea. That is amazing. Oh, so maybe you, maybe you guys can find Maybe. Out. We got some very smart folks on here, so it, it wouldn't surprise me at all. So here we have uh, a couple of very nice, uh, very rare 
probably unique uh, uh, concert posters. We could get this. Jeanette Recording Orchestra. That's, that's Wow. Amazing. Floyd Mills is Marylanders. Over here we have uh, somebody that people uh, might actually recognize, Phil Napoleon, Victor Recording or Orchestra. Yeah. Uh, very, very cool. Uh, this is an Edison Standard. Oh, okay. It's an Edison Standard cylinder phonograph with a signet horn, uh, two and four minute machine. And uh, I don't know if your uh, visitor or your viewers have seen a cylinder before. Have you guys shown those on your. Briefly, briefly. Let's see if this sounds any good. This is a phonograph too. Oh wow. You see over here, this is where your turntable is located. It actually comes up through there as well. And then on the other side, there are uh, uh, drawers for records. Yeah. That's a very This is a uh, Pathé phonograph, probably around 1918 or Wow. So. This will play vertical and lateral discs. Is that a flywheel or is that a reproducer? No, this is actually the reproducer. Oh, wow. So instead of having a horn like the other machines, mm -hmm. this, the, the diaphragm has just been greatly enlarged. Mm -hmm. And that's all you hear. And uh, it's, it's just amazing how much sound this thing puts out. This is actually a center start. Yeah, cool. Record. Wow. Yeah. So that reflects all the sound out into the room. Yeah. We've got little record stores down here. Amazing. And even closed up, it still generates an awful lot of sound. It does. It'd be pretty rare. Like oh something goodness. like this. This is an this is an original oh, US tinfoil phonograph. A tinfoil phonograph. So that dates from uh probably wow. the early eighteen eighties. Before I started my channel, I watched the Victrola guy a lot, and he did some stuff with tinfoil. It just blows mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. mind. This was made in uh, New York. It's got a tag on the bottom that shows the machine shop. Oh, my goodness. Unadilla, New York, by the Unadilla Machine Works Company. It's probably the only example they made. This was the original carrying case uh, that they made for it. it has a couple of little horns for uh, recording and playback. Just paper back. horns, huh? Yeah. Um, even had some original tinfoil with it, which I have elsewhere. Uh, that's that's the rarest machine and the most valuable machine I will ever own. That, that wow. is That is top museum quality piece right yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. For an original American tinfoil machine. And it's early. It probably... Because of the, the features or lack of features on it, you can kind of date it, and it's pretty early. It's amazing. So that's cool. Um, that's a Zonophone. This is on top of a little 7-inch uh, record storage cabinet. Wow. Um, there's a hot air fan. This, uh, this actually runs off of a flame. <laughs> really? Yeah, so uh, it's got a, uh, an alcohol burner here. Wow. You get that going. It's like essentially a space heater. <laughs> wow. It, well, it, but it, it cools. It doesn't heat. Oh, really? It's heating a, an air piston in here called a Stirling engine. And then once it gets hot enough, and then you hand start it, and it'll just continue to spin until it until the uh, alcohol is gone. That is amazing. Yeah, it is very amazing. That's an original uh, glass phonograph horn from Europe. I think these were made in France. Uh, I got that not too long ago. That's amazing. Just don't have anything to put it on right now. This is a uh, this is great. I bought this uh, original Gray Gull uh, uh, countertop record display years ago, 
I didn't really have much of anything to put in. I had great gold records. Now I got a phone call a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Guy who's running a local auction about half a mile from here, like four blocks down the road. He had those records? And he says, uh, hey, you guys buy records? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I got some if you want to come look at them. I would not even have gone to look at them if he hadn't been four blocks away. Wow. I went over there, and it was mostly a bunch of LPs. I don't care anything about them. Right. But he happened to have all these gray gold records in original sleeves. Sleeves. Yeah. Unplayed gray gold records in original sleeves. I mean, this was... Look at that. That is amazing. Brand new... It looks perfect. We just, uh, we just get really blessed like that. Yeah. On a basis. That is amazing. God has really just shined his light of blessing on us, and we are extremely thankful for that. Amen. That's great. So, all right. So this is a, a cabinet I bought in downtown Houston in an antique store when I first started out in the business. It was, came out of a dry goods shop in England, and it just makes a perfect cylinder cabinet. It does. <laughs> so uh, so that's got this has some unbelievable stuff in here. We could spend a couple of days going through this uh this wall down here is nothing but cylinders on the right uh just general inventory we've got uh down the aisles we have our 78s on the far end we have our 16 inch radio transcriptions we got some more album sets we have you know different things we've got uh, we certainly have AR afrs this in here and we've got a lot of the common uh u.s Issue stuff like Adjutant General U.S. Army, Stars on Parade. This was one of their uh, one of their fifteen minute shows. Here's a uh, this Air Force, Air Defense Force uh, issue. So so these uh, government issue discs are actually very common. But I also have stuff in here that's you know you will never see anywhere else, um, as well as soundtrack track discs. We talked about those earlier. One of those things like this is Vitaphone was the company that came up with the uh, first successful sound on disc uh, system introduced in uh, 1926. Mm -hmm. So this is a uh, very early Vitaphone pressing. This is Misha Elliman, the violinist, and uh, again I don't have my glasses on, but this would have been yeah here we go. So here we have. Uh, July 2nd, 1926. Wow. That is a... Uh, and a center start, it looks like? All of these are center start, yeah. Okay. So uh, so the arrow shows where you put your stylus, and you uh, sync that with a particular frame mm -hmm. on the reel, and you kick them all, both at the same time, and they're mechanically linked to keep wow. it in sync. And so this, you know, this changed the whole film industry for sure. Uh, and then, you know, sometime later, they introduced... Uh, you develop the sound on film so you didn't need to have the disc separate from the film mm -hmm. and you got away from that problem where they weren't you know yeah staying in sync which of course gave rise to a huge uh whole skit in the uh singing in the rain movie right yeah 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 exactly a progress exhibition yeah and so this would have been played along with some kind of a diorama mm -hmm. that they had as a public walkthrough as kind of the soundtrack to that yeah so just another Fantastic. usage of the 16-inch format. Yeah. Wasn't radio, wasn't movie, but it was... Uh, you know, that is amazing. Something totally different.